Good morning, everybody. How's everybody feeling on this Sunday? Let's do this because we haven't done this in quite a while. Severe will give it up for our South Knoxville campus at this 1115 service. What's going on? What's up, my South Knoxville peeps? Um, we went back to our 930 and 1115 format just like here for our fall winter schedule. So South Knoxville, a couple things. Number one, incredible family fest yesterday. Javon and I loved hanging out. You guys are awesome, serving the community. Great things for you guys to hear. Our South Knoxville campus had a great family fest yesterday. Our Greensboro campus had a great family fest yesterday, despite um, being in the rain the whole time. Um, we, had, we have sent 42 people from our Sevierville campus to our Greensboro campus. They're there this morning. They're having church actually right now. Their service starts at 1030 and um, it rained, but we still gave out 153 backpacks in Greensboro to the community. Hey guys, how are you? Good to see you. Um, <laughs> We're in a series called Distracted this week, so that's fantastic. Um, that's good, good. Um, if you have your Bibles, open up to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. Um, if you have something to write with, get it out. Get your phone out, although I'm going to pick on that just a little bit. Um, you guys are amazing, way above average. I'm starting a series, though, that all of us need because all of us struggle with. All of us. The series called Distracted has been in my brain for a while. It's probably the companion series to last year's series I did called Focus. To focus on what's right takes a fight. More than ever, it takes a fight to focus on what's right. What you focus on either is going to feed your faith or your doubt. But yet there's a lot of us today that struggle with the word distracted. We struggle with the word distracted. I want to start with a quote. I want everybody to engage, all of us, really lean in, um, get off your phones unless you're taking notes. The people to your left or right, you police that, okay? Make sure they're taking notes. If they're not, point at them, shake your head with like disapproval and say, he's talking about distracted and look what's happening here. Here's what I know, ready? Um, if you want to change some things up in your church life, sometimes we show up here, we sit in the same spot. How many people, you pretty much are territorial. You sit in the same spot week after week. Raise your hand high. Some of you, I would just feel right down here. I mean, I was for the third row, Ricky. I mean, I would feel if y'all if y'all sat over here, I wouldn't know what was going on in life. Um, here's what I know. Ready? The closer you sit up front, the less distracted you will be. The further you sit toward the back, sometimes it's difficult to really stay engaged, even with little old me. So um, think about that. If you are good with where you're sitting and you're like, Brent, I can lean in and I can really pay attention, that's fine. But if people distract you, squirrel, um, if people distract you, that, I'm trying, y'all, right? Um, you know, this next, this series, um, you know what? Lean in a little bit more, sit up front a little bit more and really take some notes. All of us need this. I'm gonna tell you right up front, I need it more than anybody. This stuff has convicted me as I started to think about and pray and plan for what I'm going to say. These moments are super valuable, more than ever we need it. So I'm preaching to myself as much as I'm preaching to you. A lot of, a lot of this um, information we need to uh, talk about, we need to think about, we need to value and we're gonna get there in just a minute. I want to start with a quote though. This quote is an interesting quote. Listen to what it says. If you yourself don't choose what thoughts and images, keep going, um, you expose yourself to, someone else will. I'll say it again. I want you to write it down, okay? If we don't choose what thoughts and images we expose ourselves to, someone else will. Families, moms and dads, if you choose, and this is ultimately a relationship series that we embark on, it starts, everybody look, with our relationship with God, and then it's going to start with our relationship with others, the people that really matter to us. Parents in this room, South Knoxville, raise your hand if you have children. Raise them up if you have them. Small children, let's go uh, t 12th grade down. Raise your hands if you have a child in the home 12th grade down. Okay, look, listen to me. Understand, I'm not mad. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be try to be real demonstrative because I want you to not be distracted and pay attention. But if you and I don't choose to spend time with those kids, someone else will. Amen. Marriages. Husbands, if you don't choose to value your wife and spend time with her, someone else will. 
We live in a world today that we are distracted. We get it on so many levels. But it's interesting that that little quote there, and the guy's going to come on the screen who it was, um, was written by a guy named Epictetus. He was a Greek philosopher, and he was born in 50 A.D. So it's not necessarily a technology issue, and I'm after technology today because technology is really, who was around a couple, it's been years now, in a series I did called The Elephant in the Room. Anybody here for it? Technology is the elephant in the room today. All of us, if we don't think about this, and, and here's the word, and we're intentional with what we're doing in life today, we are going to follow the path of, path of least resistance and we are going to be distracted. Many of us are, let's just say it, come on, we're addicted to a device that was invented 12 years ago. So I want to start with Scripture. I want you to try not to be distracted. I want you to engage with me. This is the key verse for the entire series, Proverbs. We find this in the Old Testament, Proverbs, the book of wisdom. Sometimes I think about this. Solomon, he wrote this book, but did Solomon do everything wise? No. He had like 700 wives. That's a bad thing right there. Okay, we got to think of it in context, but yet God breathed life into the, this book, and man, wisdom is here, and all of us are like, Brent, that's so wise. It is true. Listen, listen to this. This is huge. Let's try not to be distracted. Let's just listen, starting in verse 23 of Proverbs chapter 4. Above all else, guard your heart. I'm oh, sorry. Hold on. I forgot to mute my phone. Hold on a second. That's my, my, my son. Talk amongst yourselves. Um, what's up, dude? It's 11.37. I'm preaching. Listen, I was just reading scripture and what? what, what? Oh, yeah, that's good. Did you call your mom? Yeah, I would say go with, go with the full one. Yeah, I'm glad you called. That's important. Okay, thanks. Sorry. Don't call me back. Bye. Okay, everyone mute your phones, if you will. Come on. Back to Proverbs 4. It was my son. It was important. He's at the grocery store. He asked, should I buy a half gallon of milk or full? And I said, a full gallon of milk. That's... Come on, y'all. That's a joke. You're like, did that really just happen? Of course, that's a joke. People in the first service were gasping. He's sitting right over there. I mean, come on. All right. You're like, I can't believe that just happened. He's reading scripture. How distracted are we today is a good question. Squirrel, right? I mean, come on. <laughs> Rain it back in. Woo! Above all else, verse 23, my phone will not ring this time. <laughs> Guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it. Keep your mouth free of perversity. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Here we go, ready? Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Keep your foot from evil. To me, it sounds a lot like being intentional. We'll start with this. It's hard to believe that 12 years ago, this was invented, the smartphone. It has changed our world. Over vacation, and a lot of things I'm going to say today um, is not necessarily original to me. Some of the best things in life are stolen. As I'm on vacation, I love listening to sermons and podcasts and audiobooks. I'm a big audible.com guy. I like to listen to books. I read them, but I like to listen as well. And so as I was intentional on vacation, I spent lots of time um, listening to things that intrigued me, that, um, that I felt maybe would build some resource into me for this series. And man, was I stunned at what I read, at what changed me. I read a book from a guy named Thomas Kirsting. He's an educational psychologist, an adolescent psychologist, psychiatrist, and he wrote a book called Disconnected. And it has terrified me. 
If you want to read a book that, hey man, you're like, I'm, addic I'm addicted, my kids are addicted, what's wrong with him playing 14 hours a day of video games? I mean, read this book called Disconnected. Today, the aftermath. So now we have a book like Disconnected that's talking 12 years later about the dark side of technology. Because there's a dark side. He basically will say this, and this blows my mind. All the research has now been being studied, like really acute, that our brains are actually changing. And it takes a lot to change your brain. Like a lot. But if you and I spend more than three hours a day on a screen, whatever that looks like, just more than three, and you're like, well, that's probably everybody, um, that your brain is actually physically changing. Tentacles are growing. They call it neopruning because of the overstimulus that's going on in our lives. Everything that we see all the time, that is, it's a struggle today to really focus. It's a struggle to really like um, not have a lot of anxiety when it comes to face-to-face -face communication. He will get, for instances, of 27-year-olds now that have grown up since they were, you know, 15, 16 years old on, on that smartphone that now cannot, I mean, they have such anxiety, they cannot sit still, they cannot sit, and for 15 minutes, he gave a 27-year-old girl one assignment, sit still um, with no noise for 15 minutes a day, just 15 minutes a day, and she couldn't do it. She tried it for two days and she had overwhelmed anxiety attacks because of just sitting still that she had to run back um, to her phone. She had to run back to her devices. Why? Because that's, our brain is like changing. The new normal is now arriving upon our generation. And it's not really good. Our relationship with God is suffering like never before. Our faith is suffering. Why? Because you realize there are many times that we have to be still, the Bible says, to know that God is God. His still small voice will speak, but we have to clear out the noise to listen. And we don't do that. We are distracted. More than ever before, I mean, people across the board, whether it's adolescents, whether it's us adults, we're addicted, and I'll start with me. I'll, I'll go ahead and start this group therapy session together, and I'll say, if I don't watch it, I'm not intentional, this, this will really just take a lot of my time. Who's with me? You're fourth in line at Starbucks. You stand there, and you're like, well, why did you go to Starbucks? Have you had their venti white chocolate mocha with caramel drizzle? It's going to be in heaven, I'm just saying, probably, under a different name. Fourth in line at Starbucks, I'm waiting my turn. Instead of me, I don't know, spending a few moments in solitude and prayer and praying for these people around me that they'll find God. Um, maybe, I don't know, looking around, using my imagination, what do I do? What am I looking at? I don't know. But I can't be bored for one second. Who's with me? Many of us today, we struggle, and I think we're a lot like the children of Israel. I mean, human nature is human nature. The phones are not the problem. It's magnifying the problem. Human nature is the problem. And here's exactly what is going on. And I, I'm going to say something that's going to sting, and you're going to be like, Brent, you're a preacher. This is, uh, uh, uh. I, I get it. <laughs> The children of Israel, God would bless them. God would do something incredible for them. He would make a way for them. I don't know, like give, provide manna from heaven that they would actually eat and provide their needs. The children of Israel would be blessed by God. And they would thank God for like two seconds. But instead of saying, God, you know what? I'm so thankful for you. I'm ready to serve you more. I'm going to love you with all my heart, all my soul, all my might. What do they do? I think I'll go over here to this little God and hang out with him for a little while. And you're like, those children of Israel are idiots. Well... Here we go, ready? If you wake up every morning and this is the first thing you look at, and you go to bed at night and this is the last thing you look at, and during the day you give your very best to this all of your time, this is your God. Amen. <laughs> it's awful preacher. I'm just, we, we say, well, we're not into idol worship, really? How much time do we give this and how much time do we give God? 
How much time do we give our families? I mean, I'll, make, I'll give you all the sad stats you want to in the world. I promise you, our time alone with God today is at an all-time low. Parents, our time alone with our kids is at an all-time low. Why? Here, everybody, look, distraction is not a bad word in our culture, right? It's a good word. We run to it. We come home from a hard day's work. Here, Junior, have an iPad. Sit down, do this. I got to watch my shows. I got to surf Facebook. And look at what y'all ate yesterday for long. I mean, it doesn't, think about it. Well, you're like, Brent, you've been on this road before, but I got to start here. I have to. It's the elephant in the room. I can talk to us all day long about communication skills, but if you and I are not prepared to acknowledge, hey, wait a minute, maybe there's stuff going on here. I don't want to be like everybody else. I, I feel like you know, life is changing. Faith is fading in so many I wonder why. Pastor Mike made the greatest statement I've heard in a long time. I don't know if he stole it. If he didn't, we're giving him all the credit for this because we sat in a creative meeting and we were talking about this series and he goes, Brent, today the enemy probably is not as empty as tempting us as he is distracting us today. Because when we get distracted, bad things happen. If we're not intentional to walk a road, Proverbs is going to say, we're going to pretty soon be on a road that we don't want to be on. And today we run to the virtual. We don't want to think about pain and misery and death and this life is leaving us. We don't want to. We don't like it. We run to distractions. But you understand your faith does not grow on the mountaintop. It will not grow in the virtual world. Our faith will grow in the valley. But many of us, we, we just live that life in oblivion. And we run to this phone. We're, it's crazy. Why, do we, why does this phone have such a grip on us? Some of you, it's tethered to your body. Not just the adolescents. You're like, preach it to the teenagers, Brent. Preach it. Some of you right now are like, I think I should put my phone down. <laughs> Listen to this. This is interesting. We keep going back to our phones, and the question is why. We understand it's, it's more of a, a human nature deal, not a phone deal. And so I thought this was really interesting. I listened to a podcast, and he brought up this guy, and I kind of pulled it up, and I thought, wow, this is interesting. There's a comedian. His name is Louis C.K. I don't know if you know who Louis C.K. is. He's a comedian. I do not condone his comedy. But I know this, that he is kind of famous now or infamous for if you are on your phone during one of his comedy acts, he likes to ridicule you. He likes to make fun of you, kind of like I do. <laughs> and so he was on Conan O'Brien two years ago, and he and Conan were having a banter back and forth, and Conan asked him this question. Hey, I hear that, you know, you think cell phones are bad, and he started to go off on this cell phone idea and listen to what he says. Now, they're bantering back and forth and it was kind of funny, but if you just read the transcript of what Louis C.K., I do not believe he's a Christian, okay? You know you're a Christian by the fruit that you bear. But listen to what he says. It's very interesting if you read the transcript. This is a nice snapshot and comedians are really astute at reading people. They just take human nature and human condition and they kind of make fun of the things that we do and we say, ooh, that's super funny because that's true. Listen to what he says. This is, this is profound. He says, um, Conan asks him, why do we keep going to all these, these phones? And he says this, here's why. Because underneath everything in your life, this is his quote now, because underneath everything in your life, there's that thing, that empty that forever empty, just like the knowledge that it's all for nothing and you're alone. And sometimes when things clear away, you're not watching anything, you're in your car and you're like, oh no, here it comes, I'm alone. He says, when it feels like that, it just starts to visit on you this sadness. Life is tremendously sad just by being in it. So you're driving and you pull out your phone and you just start scrolling and texting. That's why we text and drive. He says, I look around and pretty much everybody is driving and texting. Everybody is wanting to murder each other with their car. And I said, well, Louis, I know you said this two years ago on Conan, but the law changed here at the 1st of July that you can't text and drive. So that is pretty much stop texting and driving in the state of Tennessee. No one does that anymore. Okay. Listen to what he says. So profound. 
People are willing to risk taking a life and ruining their own life, texting and driving. Why? Because they don't want to be alone for one second. Wow. There's, there's an actual disorder I, I read in the book, Disconnected, called FOMO, F-O-M-O. People today literally have a disorder. It's called the fear of missing out. We are so tethered to social media and real-time news that many of us, we don't want to be alone. We don't want to be bored for one second. So as a preacher, I'll take it all the way to here. Ready? For many of us, we don't want to think about the fact that the way we're living our one and only life isn't the way that we should be living our one and only life. Today, more than ever, it's easier to distract ourselves from a world that's jacked up. Life passes by. We don't want to Think about death, misery, pain, or the hardness of life, so we run to the virtual. You could say the opt word today in our society is distracted. Distraction, Webster's Dictionary, ready? A thing that prevents someone from giving full attention to something else. The word distracted, unable to concentrate because one's mind is preoccupied. Our minds are diverting from a life that matters. We are easily distracted. The other day, I came home from Greensboro, Monday, um, Monday night. Javon and I were driving home, and Tuesday morning, driving home from Greensboro, North Carolina. We had a great night there Monday, and Javon was driving. I was working on a few things. I was trying to focus, and then all of a sudden, I got distracted, and there was this Jeep in front of me. Look what was on the back of this guy's Jeep. This was interesting. I just thought, wow, I was thinking about the word distracted, and all of a sudden, I took a picture of this on, on my, my way home, and I was thinking, man, that's me, but that's random, isn't it? You're easily distracted by Jeeps and dogs. <laughs> Jeeps, I know we've had the Jeep invasion here in Pigeon Forge the last few days. I don't really care about that, but I can be easily distracted by dogs. Who's with me? Life is easy. I mean, it's easy for us to be distracted. Some of us in this room, this is a lesson that's happening right in front of us. It's hard for you to like, Brent, I'm trying, I'm trying to stay with you, man. But I haven't refreshed Instagram in like, I don't know, three minutes. And I, something could have happened. Something could have happened. <laughs> Subtle distractions. Forget technology. How about this that we have to deal with over this next six weeks? Today, we're so distracted about the promise of tomorrow. We waste so many days waiting for the weekends. Somebody wrote this. The, our lust for future comfort is the biggest thief of our lives. Psalm 90, 12, I preached it the last three weeks. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Some of us were distracted by the regret of yesterday. To live life is to experience regret. Nobody is going to escape life unscathed on this one. But yet if all you do is live in the past of regret and all you're distracted about the stuff that was done to you and that you have done, it will rob you of today. Amen. It does. We don't like to hear it. The pull of comparison. How about that distraction? It seems by nature we're, we feel compelled to compare ourselves to the people around us. We compare our belongings, our appearance, our families, our successes. How much energy are we wasting focusing on the wrong things? Our fullest potential requires that we notice distraction and work diligently to overcome it. Tweet that. That was good. I'm trying the greatest thing I can give you today, and it's really a point of application, is I listened to a podcast that brought up a guy named Benjamin Bloom. He is an he is a educational psychologist. And then I pulled him up and I found an article on ChristianLifeCoaching.com. And I thought, wow, this is articulated well. I really love this. Our people can grab, I can grab a hold of it. Our people can grab a hold of this. So I want you to think about this. I want you to put this in your life. And I want us to use this as our formula of, you know what, how are we going to apply this series to our lives? Your time is valuable, and so I want to give you this. It is called The Five Steps of Change, and this is good. Everybody needs to sit up and pay attention. 
Okay, there's your presence, that's you right now, and then there's change. Many of us go, you know what? There are things in my life I want to change. I'm stuck in the present. I can't seem to change. How do I really overcome? What do I do? Um, I've tried this. I've tried that. It doesn't seem like anything is changing. So this guy named Benjamin Bloom, educational psychologist, has broken it down and given us the real reason why many of us don't change or can't change when it comes to stuff that's going on in our lives, whether it's our spiritual life, whether it's a family matter, whether it's a health issue, whatever. Think about this. This is really good. He says, the first step of change is to be aware. To be aware. Awareness is a key word today. We are aware that something needs to happen. Something needs to change. We are aware. If we don't have moments like this, we don't become aware of like, hey, Brent, you're right. I mean, the, man, look, at, look at how addicted we've become. I mean, I don't ever call this idol worship, but you're kind of right there. I mean, I give this my first, my last, and my best of the day. After aware, the next step of change is to ponder, to think about it. These are moments that we ponder. We don't ever sit around and contemplate anything anymore. We're so moving quickly. Data information is skewing by our faces so fast. Every single day, we, we're like, we can't seem to quiet ourselves. But we have to ponder and think about it. We have to think about, you know what? Um, I have becoming aware that something needs to change in my life, so I'm really going to think about it. I'm going to give it. Uh, uh, I'm going to give it some time. I love the word ponder. The next word is value. Wow! You know what? As I am aware that something needs to change in my life, I'm thinking about this change. I'm valuing this as important. I need this in my life. I, I know this is important for me to value this, this step of change. Here's the problem. If we just live in those first three steps, all of us are good with that. All of us would agree with that, but a lot of us won't change because we don't go to step number four and step number five. And the issue is, the reason we don't do that is there is a gap. And that is what I want us to key on. That gap is huge. It's very difficult to jump that gap. Because if we ever get past this gap that many of us don't get past and change, then we get to step four, which is prioritizing. Listen to my voice clearly here. We prioritize now with our lifestyle what we say we value. And then when you begin to prioritize that, you begin to walk the walk, all of a sudden now you're at change. You own it. It's the new you. You're like, but what is the issue, everybody? Look at me. What is the issue? The issue is the gap. What is the gap? Here's what Benjamin Bloom will say is distraction. An older lady walked out of first service. She grabbed me. I'm like, what's going on? She goes, I need to talk to you for a second. I'm like, okay. And she said this. I mean, this was amazing. I'm going to preach it. I'm going to give her the credit. I'm going to preach it. Ready? She goes, do you realize the devil is in the gap? The gap is distraction. So let's put it into real life. Okay, here we go. Let's put it in, into this equation now. Let's see if you agree with this. This is good. Let's, let's talk about diet and exercise. <laughs> Most of us are aware that we need to probably eat better. Most of us are aware that the body is meant for movement. Our temple of God, I mean, this God has created us. And when we exercise, we feel better. When we diet, we feel better. It, it takes care of a lot of issues. Many of us have thought about this. We've looked at ourselves in the mirror like, ooh, I got to do something. So we start to value, hey, this is important. Look at me. I look like an Oompa Loompa. I mean, I got to change a little. <laughs> they make bigger clothes, right? I mean, so here's the issue. How many of us would say, 100% of us are going to go, that's, uh, that's so right. We got to, I mean, we got to value that. That's so important. For health issues, just to feel good, all these things, that's important. We need to value that. But how many of us actually prioritize and do something about it and own it? And we lose the weight and we, we exercise, we put it into our daily activities, very few. Why? Because if there's a gap. We get distracted. We say, today's the day. You go tomorrow. Tomorrow's the day. I'm going to go to work. I'm going to eat right. I'm going to choke down the salad. My wife's packed me some grapes. I'm good to go. I'm going to work out after work. You get, you, get to, you get to the office. You do good till like 1030 in the morning. Then all of a sudden lunch comes around, and then they start passing out the donuts because so-and-so's birthday is today. 
And you're like, these great, oops, squirrel, there's the donuts, right? And you walk there. And we get distracted and we eat and all of a sudden we go, well, this weekend's Labor Day weekend and we're going to cook out and then after that's my birthday. And of course, then we're into the holidays. You can't really lose weight in the holidays. I mean, that's, that's just not fair to the pilgrims and the Indians and not fair to, to, you know, I mean, Santa Claus. We got to eat. I mean, that's important. And then I'm taking a cruise in March. I'm going to gain 15 pounds then. So why even start now? I'll wait till after. <laughs> we're distracted. I mean, there's a reason the hot light is on at Krispy Kreme Donuts. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go into something now that some of you are going to hate. I'm going to walk into this over this next bit of this message, and you need to understand. Look at me. Krispy Kreme does not like you. <laughs> they are money makers. They don't, they don't go, oh, you know what? We're going to put the red light on because so-and-so needs to feel good about them. They're going to feel great when they eat this. This is comfort food. They want to take your money. They don't care about your cholesterol level. What? There's a reason that every restaurant we go to, I mean, the, the greatest analogy is Cheesecake Factory. Only there can you order a salad and it has 7,000 calories in the salad. <laughs> and then we get a salad to make room for the red velvet cheesecake. <laughs> You're like, where are you going? How about this? Reading scripture and prayer. Ain't one person in this room is going to tell me that, you know what, I need more of that. I, I, I come to church, not even at church, I think about this a lot. I need to spend more time with God. You know what, I need to value that as, as a priority in my life. How many people would say, Brent, that's so important? Raise your hand high. Let's see it. Raise it up if you like. Reading God's word and prayer is so important to our day-to-day lives. Raise them up. Come on, let's be honest. Look around. Look around. All right, put your hands down. How many of us actually do that? Very few. Minutes, maybe. And that's a low percentage of us. Why? There's a gap and it's distraction. By the way, the devil lives in the gap. Church attendance. I, I don't have any, I, it really, I, I'm not running to anybody in Walmart lately that I go, hey, I've been missing you in church. I know. I know I need to be there. I'm aware of that. I've thought about it. My wife is, hey, we need to value it. I know we need to be there. We've got so much going on. But they don't show up. They might come every once in a while. Why? Distraction. Today, more than ever before, we are distracted. So I want you to think about that. I love that because this is a phrase that, man, I didn't think of it. I stole it. I love this phrase. I think it's so, it's so important to put into my life and our life. Ready here, listen to this. If we don't watch where we are going, we will end up where we don't want to be. If we are not intentional with our lives and our family, the enemy, man, he's in the gap. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 says this. Apostle Peter will say this. This is awesome. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Back to Pastor Mike's statement. Satan isn't as concerned about tempting us when all he has to do today is distract us. And we have bought into that distractions are good because we don't want to think about real life issues. You're like, that's not really the case. Then you give me the reasons why we stare at our phones all day other than we are addicted. And why are we, what is it that we're getting out of it? Not much. Social media, technology, our cell phone is like poison ivy. You're going to scratch that itch and scratch that itch and scratch that itch and it will never satisfy it just doesn't. That's why there's no end to Facebook and you don't get to, oh, I'm, I, I've got to the end of Instagram. Look, look at me, everybody. Ready? Facebook is not your family. They don't care about you. You're like, what? If Facebook cared about me and you, we would be on it for 45 minutes and a screen would pop up on Facebook and says, for the love of God, you have a family. Go outside walk around. They don't care. 
Instagram, I mean, they don't care. Netflix is not our friend. You're like, what? Is, I love it. I love it. What is the greatest commodity today? A few weeks ago, I said time. Okay, what is the greatest, some of you business types, what is the greatest commodity of a business today? It's vying for you, for our attention. It's very hard to get our attention today. Netflix. How much of us, and I'm just picking on technology because it's the elephant in the room, and if we can just maybe throw those steps of change into our lives, say, hey, you know what, Brent, everything you say I agree with, well, let some of us jump the gap a little bit here, and let's start to prioritize and own some change in our lives so we can communicate with God and communicate with our family the stuff that really, 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 really matters. Netflix, my wife, she always takes me down the dark side. Six months ago, it was probably six months now, maybe five months ago, she wanted to watch some Netflix show. Thursday night, um, about seven o'clock, we had spent some time together. We actually, I remember this night, we ate dinner together. Uh, it was great. And we had Friday off and she sat down and she goes, hey, let's watch an episode of this show. I, don't, I forgot what it was. I mean, another new season had come out. And we sat down at seven o'clock and we watched one episode. The Netflix fights dirty, don't they? Because in the bottom right-hand corner, what does it say? The next episode begins in five, four, three, two, one. I look at her, she looks at me, and we're like, we're here. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed to say this. Four in the morning. <laughs> what did we do? <laughs> we watched like the whole day, that Netflix fog. Who's had that before? Raise your hand. We, Louis C.K., we laugh because it's true. <laughs> Just put a diaper on and stay right here. I'm good. <laughs> and you know what's crazy? I know people with glee will say, I, I knocked out a whole season yesterday. <laughs> Jim and Dee McCord. Jim, our ball-headed wonder right here on staff. He's now discovered the TV show 24 with Kiefer Sutherland. You remember that? Other days, like me and D, we knocked out 12 episodes in like one sitting. <laughs> it's interesting how much the culture today is vying for our time. There is a gap. It's called distraction. All of us live in that gap. We have got to start jumping that gap because the devil is in that gap. There's an enemy that wants to devour us. And you know what? The culture does not care if your marriage goes to crap. They don't. A lot of people will like it. There are lots of divorce courts. There's lots of attorneys that are going to make a lot of money. They, you know, Netflix, Facebook, Instagram doesn't care if you start to disconnect from your children. What does it matter? They're in it to make money. No one cares. Yet we are all sheep. Many of us, you're going to go after this service. You're going to sit at a restaurant. You are not going to communicate with anybody. You're going to refresh what? Nothing. Why? Because we don't want to be alone and we don't want to be bored for we don't want to be bored for one second. Our brains are changing. So more than ever, we have to go back to God's word and be reminded. Listen to what First Peter chapter four, one chapter back says. So powerful. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be clear-minded and self-controlled so that you and I can pray. Clear-minded and self-controlled. It's interesting to me that those two are tied together. We are not clear-minded if we are not self-controlled. If there's no place for reflection, no withdrawal into silence, I believe God wants to do something amazing in my life and in your life, in my family's life, in your family's life, but unless we are intentional more than ever today, it's not going to happen. We have to invite God in. We have to spend time in prayer. Some of us better start counting the cost and spending that time and building that path back toward God. I'll close with this. I entitled the message, Build a Beach. Weird title for a message. But it's interesting what happened to me. On July the 14th, on my vacation, it was a Sunday morning. 
I got up, I said this a few weeks ago, that um, that was my wife and I's anniversary, and I was you know, excited to get up, and she was going to have a very big anniversary day surprise for me, and <laughs> nothing. Um, <laughs> earlier that morning, I want to rewind all the way to 6 a.m. We checked in the beach on Saturday, Sunday's our first day there. I was going to go to church. The church service started around 10.30, so I had a little bit of time, and I was anxious to get on the beach, turn right, and walk toward Clearwater Pass. That is my walking toward God. That sounds weird. I get it. But for years and years now, I just can't wait to revisit this place. I love it. When I listen, I'm very intentional what I listen to on that beach. I listen to um, sermons and praise and worship music and podcasts, mostly audiobooks, audible.com. I listen to um, audiobooks. I love to listen to books and just be intentional about, hey, God, pour into my life wisdom, things that I need to think about. And obviously, a lot of things that maybe I think about and, and I, I read kind of bleeds into what I say because I get so convicted. I'm like, wow, I'm just really trying to get it right as well. It's so good all of us need to really think about these things. So it stunned me as I got to the beach, turned right on July the 14th, the previous year, the the state of Florida had done a beach restoration project. They actually had big barges out about a half a mile and they brought big tubes in because of the storms they had over the last four or five years, the wind and the waves. um, A lot of the beach on the Gulf Coast of Florida had started to erode, to go away. So they did a restoration project. They spent, I don't know, hundreds of millions of dollars, state and federal funds to replenish the beach. So the year before, I mean, Indian Rocks was tiny. The beach was very small. We're like, man, where's the beach going to go? Well, we get here this year, and the beach is expansive. It's like triple the size. I mean, you have to walk a while. You're like, this is beautiful. The sand is awesome. Plenty of beach. Well, I got out there, and I'd spent Saturday afternoon and Sunday morning um, starting to walk that beach. And when I got from Indian Rocks to the Bel Air Beach city limit, Things drastically changed. Indian Rocks Beach ended. Bel Air Beach began. Indian Rocks is where all the condos and hotels are. Um, Bel Air Beach is where all the sweet multi-million dollar beach homes are. Love walking that, just staring at those houses thinking, I bet these people are miserable. (laughs) Who's with me? Who's ever walked that? Yeah, they don't. That $20 million beach house with the lazy river and the bomb sure they hate that. So when I got to the Bel Air Beach city limit, the beach was gone. Gone. I'd walked early in the morning. It was high tide. Now it was kind of an extra high tide because they had that tropical storm out there in July. And so when I got to Bel Air Beach, the water was actually hitting the seawall. I lost my path to God. Like what's going on here? And so for about six blocks, I had to go off the beach and walk down the sidewalk. I can't hear God walking down the sidewalk. (laughs) Traffic all over the place. Talking about distracted. So as I walk back, I want you to take a look at this picture. I was coming back. I had gone to Clearwater Pass. I was walking back. The tide is now starting to descend. It's starting to head toward low tide. But you can see what I'm talking about here um, as I took this picture. Um, look, you can see the seawall. You can see that um, just now can you start snaking around and walking the beach. But early that morning, the water had come all the way up to the wall. Why? Well, During the 2018 Florida Restoration Project, there were state and federal funds for all the hotels and condos because that's tax dollars, tourism tax dollars. But now as you hit Bel Air Beach, it's all privately owned houses where there were no state and and federal funds attached to that. So the state of Florida reached out to the multi-million dollar beach home owners and said, hey, while we have all the equipment out here at a highly discounted rate, you guys got to vote on this, you got to pay... And we will restore your beach in front of your home as well. And they voted no. Why? Well, most of them don't even live there. You walk down that beach, I never see, I don't care if it's at Christmas time or in the summer, you never see those houses, those people that own those multi-million dollar beach houses and they use them three weeks a year. They're never there. They're distracted with other things. So they voted no. Why do they want to pay for that? What do they care? They're hardly there. And they screwed up my path to God. 
And for some reason, the preacher in me, the weird mind in me, the creative type in me are like, what, what an incredible spiritual analogy. These people were unwilling to count the cost, got so distracted that they are now losing the whole reason why they walk, bought their beach house in the first place. They don't now, and during high tide, have a beach. And you're like those stupid rich people. But that is us. Many of us, we are not counting the cost. We're not fighting for our homes. We forgot the reason we got married in the first place, why we have kids, all of these things that reinvent life, the blessings that God has given us because we get distracted and we don't count the cost. And ultimately, if we get so distracted and don't count the cost anymore, we lose our path to God and leading our homes toward that path to God. That's where we're at today. The devil's in the, the, the lady's right. The devil's in the gap. And I, I'm there and you're there. Are we going to ultimately jump that gap? Turn our eyes back on what matters. So let's go back to Proverbs chapter four. Above all else, guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it. Keep your mouth free of perversity. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or left. Keep your foot from evil. Be intentional. Be intentional. God, I know this message has been a little different. I've probably tread on ground. I've tread on before, but I'm so, I just feel so like this is needed. We got to start here to once again work on building that relationship with you, building that relationship with others. Let us not just follow the path of least resistance. If we're not intentional, the time is not going to be there. Many of us, we know that change needs to happen. We're probably like, why are we doing, just like me, why are we doing what we're doing? Why am I sitting on my phone? What am I leaving looking at? Yet many of us just need to be intentional. We need to be aware. We need to think about it. We need to value it. We need to jump the gap, prioritize it, and own it. The difference could be staggering in our lives. It will be. So God, use these moments of pondering. Use these moments that we can think and look to you and just, once again, gain a heart of wisdom. We need it. We need it. I'm so grateful for this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said.